Hey guys, welcome to chapter two of A Completed Work, The Seven Last Sayings of Jesus Christ. Now today, I am so excited because uh, this young man is a, a great man of God. Um, he understands the word and interpret the word and he listens to what God has for him. So I know he has a word for you, for you today. So help me welcome back to our YouTube channel, a great friend of mine, a brother of mine, Tyler. Hicks Nelson. My name is Tyler Hicks Nelson. I am a third year student at Howard University and I'm super excited to be a part of this sermon series. So as you should know by now, we are doing the seven last sayings of Jesus and the one that I was given really blessed my spirit as I studied it and I'm hoping that it blesses you um, as I basically relay what I was able to learn in my time with the Holy Spirit and really just reading and studying through this passage. I'm gonna be coming from Luke chapter 23, verses 39 through 43. And it's basically, I'll just break down what's going on in the passage. I'm um, gonna give a little background info, and then I'll share with you what the Holy Spirit relayed to me as I was studying. But before all that happens, I wanna pray, um, just to make sure that my heart and spirit is in the right place. Um, Holy Spirit, I just wanna welcome you. Um, I just want to ask that you fill me up all the more so that it is not me speaking, but it's you speaking through me so that people may be blessed, um, that people may be fed, spirits may be fed, that people who are broken may find um, wholeness in you, um, that those who are lost that do not know you may want to come to know you. Um, and I ask that you forgive me any sins um, that I've said, thought, and or done, um, that you hold it not against me as I bring forth this word. Uh, again, I really, really hope, Lord, that this blesses someone in Jesus name. Amen. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna I'm break it down a little bit. I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna give you the context and I'm gonna relay what the Holy Spirit has shown and um, revealed to me as I've studied it. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and read that. So Luke 23 verses 39 through 43. <laughs> One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other quickly rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God? Since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due rewards of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Truly I say to you, Today, you will be with me in paradise. So what's going on is Jesus is in the middle of being crucified. He has already been beaten, whipped, um, and basically beaten almost beyond recognition. And he's endured to this point constant jeers and um, mocking from Roman soldiers and Jewish leaders, leadership who has sanctioned his crucifixion. And as he's being hanged on the cross, he's in between two criminals. Uh, and what happens, as I just read in Luke 23, verses 39 to 44, or well, 43, excuse me, um, what happens is important. Um, one criminal began to mock Jesus, basically questioning his deity, um, jeering him again, saying, hey, aren't you some savior aren't you god save yourself prove it save yourself and while you're at it save me too the other one frustrated by the first criminal's lack of reverence checks him saying do you not know who you're talking to do you not fear god do you not respect who you're in the presence of and he's like, we, we deserve what we're getting, but this man doesn't deserve any of this. What, what's wrong with you? You don't know who you're talking to. This man is without blemish. 
And he turns to Jesus and he says, Jesus, remember me, please, when you get to your kingdom. And Jesus responded to him saying, truly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Now, what's funny about this passage is, and it actually gave me the name of, of the sermon. The name of the sermon is you can be in the presence of God and still miss out on paradise. Or you can meet Jesus and still miss out on paradise. Both criminals were in the presence of God. Yet only one received salvation. And of course I wondered why. And as I kept reading and I kept studying, I realized it was because of the difference in heart posture. The first criminal was haughty, arrogant. His heart was hard against God. He, he had no desire to to truly know, learn, and accept who Jesus was. He, he didn't believe that he was who he said he was, so everything that he asked him was, was from a place of contempt. Yet the other one knew exactly who Jesus was, and he knew who he himself was. He knew that he was a broken person, someone who was guilty of what he had committed, and he knew that the righteous payment due to him was death. Yet Jesus had done nothing of the sort and he was being punished for something he didn't do. The second one had a repentant heart. He was humble. He, he wanted to turn away from what he had done. He said, I know I'm wrong and I, I just give myself to you. I just want to be where you are. I just want you to remember me. Please remember me. And that really, really checked me personally to go and think of, well, how do I think of God? How do I approach God? Do I, do I pro approach him from a place that is irreverent, lacking respect, saying, you know, I, I do this, I do that, I, I go to church, you know, I try not to cuss, I, I try not to be drunk, I don't have sex before marriage, you know, Lord bless me because I've done all this. I deserve to be saved because I, I do this and it, and it was like the Holy Spirit was saying no 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 you don't you can't earn salvation you never you never could the only reason that salvation is available to you is because God humbled himself to the point of death to die on the cross and that second criminal knew that And he said, Lord, I just want you to remember me. I know I'm wrong, but I want, I want you to save me. And because of his heart posture, because of where he was, he knew he was broken and he needed saving. He, the Lord said, I, I got you. And I know the Lord is waiting to save and to get everybody else but you can't put an envelope into a closed mailbox and many of us our hearts have been closed off to to Jesus we we, we mock the idea of him and he's really saying hey I, 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 I have paradise for you I have abundant life for you I have deliverance and healing from sickness and suffering for you. I have all of these things for you. But you have to there, there, there's, there's a there's a two part acceptance. You, you, you have to confess with your mouth and you have to believe and accept in your heart that Jesus Christ is who he said he was. I don't want to spend my life meeting Jesus, interacting with Jesus, and still missing out on paradise because my heart posture was poor. Because I rejected Jesus in my heart. And honestly, I don't want that for any of you. So I'm gonna close out in prayer. Lord, I thank you for your love and your mercy and your, and your grace and I, 
I ask that your your Holy Spirit just fall upon us and and help us to truly understand and know who you are. So that it's not just lip service that we are giving you, but in our hearts we truly believe that you are who you said you are, and you did what you said you did, and and we are who you say we are. That we truly understand that by you, through you, we can be children of the kingdom. We don't want to meet you and be in your presence and still miss out. Help us to know you and to believe you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to The Bear Way. Um, they are a wonderful, blessed couple. Um, God is really doing things for them.